All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Ford Bronco. Up front, it has a swapped in 6.9 liter diesel V8 and down below is a four speed manual transmission. Now, before I get the comments, this has been front end swapped. This is an early 80s front end of a Bronco that has been bolted onto a 1990. This is what a 1990 Bronco front end should look like, but we'll talk about that later on. Let's get back to that 6.9 liter diesel V8. Well, that is not a factory engine for the Bronco. This has been swapped in from a 1984 Ford F250. I'll put the stock original power numbers for the F250 up on the screen. Uh, take them as you will, uh, you know, over 30 years ago. So, you know, what is it making now? No one really, really knows. All right, second gear pull in the 6.9. It's not happy to be alive. Like I said, paired to it is a four speed manual transmission that feels horrible. I'm not really sure what gear I'm in. I can't really feel it. All right, I think we're in fourth. Not 100% sure. The clutch is very, very heavy. This is sort of a tricky vehicle to drive if you're not used to driving vehicles of this caliber. For me, for instance, I drive a 1993 Mazda Miata. It has a super light clutch. You barely have to breathe on the throttle to get it into gear. But this, you really gotta work it. Now, last but not least, of course, this is four wheel drive. Stock Broncos for 1990 would have had electronic four wheel drive, but this, this has the tried and true manual again swapped in from an older f-series pickup so let's talk about the interior this is mostly 90s stock so in front of me i have a bunch of different gauges on the left i have my battery voltage i do have two batteries because this is a diesel it needs the two batteries however battery voltage oil pressure coolant temperature and fuel of course still says unleaded fuel only but it's really diesel only now in the center i have my speedometer with the comical red line at 55 in the 90s and 80s the national speed limit was 55 miles an hour and there's a big push to not break this so a lot of 80s and 90s cars have that line or designation or an arrow pointing to 55 miles an hour then i have my tachometer on the far right my steering wheel is missing some parts that's okay but in front of the steering wheel i have my lights i have my wipers my rear window up and down, which is very, very nice, and a rear defroster. And then on the right, I have my overdrive. On the door, I just have my window crank. Nothing really too crazy there. And then in the center, I have very bare bones, very basic heating and air conditioning. Cool or warm, not hot or cold. I love that. I love that Ford trucks of this era because I recently drove a 1990 F-250 I love that trucks of this era, they're not hot and cold, it's just eh, warm or cool. Let's be honest here, that's all you're ever gonna get out of these things is slightly warmer, slightly cooler. Then I have an aftermarket radio because every radio from the 90s was absolute garbage. Then I have the shifter. This is obviously a custom shifter with the pool ball at the top, the rebar as the actual bar itself. Very long, very tall, not exact at all, but you know, it's, here the center console i do have cup holders it's kind of nice and the seats the seats are incredibly comfortable 90s cars 90s vehicles know how to do seats these are not the stock seats these are out of an eddie bauer edition later model ford but still 90s nevertheless but we do have back seats so we'll do a back seat review all right so i'm in the back of the bronco and being a big man, it is not easy to get back here. But once you are back here, it actually is really comfortable. This roll bar is not factory. It doesn't come in all the Broncos, but the actual seat itself, it like kind of has cushion. Like it's kind of actually comfortable. I have an ashtray, surprisingly. Speaker and uh, of course you could take the soft top off. This is a soft top. You can get a soft top or a hard top, but this right here is removable, which is really, really cool. You get that open air trucking experience that you would get out of a Jeep or older vehicles like that. 
really, really cool. This all comes off and I can just hang out in the, in the sun. Oh, I love that. Now we have to talk about the looks. Like I said, this front end has been swapped and actually patch panels from an 80s Bronco have been swapped in as well. So really what you're looking at is an 80s Bronco besides the rear taillights. The rear taillights, that's a 90. And so that drives the bigger point about this Bronco that I wanted to make. Should I just power shift it into third? Will it give me fourth? Yes, it will. That's the bigger point I wanted to make about the Bronco. And just F-Series Broncos, Rangers, Broncos from the 80s and 90s. Something that I learned today that I absolutely love. The parts from the Bronco Ranger and F-Series pickup trucks are pretty much all interchangeable from the 80s through most of the 90s. Like I said, this has the engine out of an F-250. This has axles out of an F-Series. It has the different front end from a different Bronco. And the owner, Rob, which thank you so much, Rob, for letting me review this Bronco. Rob hasn't really done any real fabricating to get all this stuff to work in harmony. Yeah, he had to change a radiator support, but does that count? The axles bolt right up. You could put one ton axles in this thing without buying any new brackets. The 6.9 liter diesel never came in the Bronco, but here it is, just plopped in. This is like Honda level plug and play stuff. You could pretty much plug any Honda engine into any Honda transmission, you'll pretty much be fine, for the most part. Any Honda chassis will accept pretty much any Honda engine. Besides J-swaps, whatever, don't even get into that. You can pretty much take any Ford engine from the 80s and 90s, plop it into this thing, no problem. These came with 2.3 liter inline fours, which are pretty much from the Mustang, the four cylinder Fox body, or you could get a 2.9 liter, or you could get a 302. All of those engines bolt right up to this thing. I love it, and I just drove past an EG Civic. This truck rivals the EG Civic on parts availability. They're so easy to find parts for. If you want to change the axles, if you want to change the hubs, if you want to change the engine, if you want to change the transmission, if you want to change the transfer case, parts are available with very little to no modification. And what that tells me is that these trucks are ready to stand the test of time. Because I don't know many things in this world, and I'm not a very smart man, but I do know that Ford trucks will be around for a very, very long time. And so I was so excited to drive this. Thank you so much, Rob, for letting me take out your Bronco with the new Bronco, the 2021 Bronco on the horizon. I really wanted to drive one of the originals. And while this is modified and changed and things like that, this is what Broncos are nowadays. I love it. These things are awesome. They just are awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Rob for letting me take out his Bronco. His information is up on the screen. His Instagram, go give him a follow. He's got a bunch of old Ford stuff as well. Not only the Bronco, but Rangers, old F-150s, 250s, 350s. If it was made by Ford in the 80s or 90s, Rob has owned it, so give him a follow. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.